thank you so much for the invitation to be here today. Uh, we were very excited to be part of the CTO Berkeley Change Makers uh, Technology Grant. Um, I will basically give the word to Elnaz Bailey. So she's a PhD student. She is really doing this as her PhD um, uh, project, and I would like her to, you know, jump into the presentation, and we will be available for any Q and A at the end. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lisa. So I'm going to start. Um, um, uh, Bill did a great job ex explaining who we are. Um, so I'm just going to go to the next page and start talking about how and why we started with this project. So um, as we all know, online collaboration is and learning has become super common in the last decade, both in the academic environment and professional practice. Um, one thing though that's very important in the design field and specifically architecture is the studio environment. So students basically, you know, you have all those desks, people sit next to each other, they're working, they're designing, you know, it's a very creative environment and they learn from discussing things with each other and there's a lot of like uh, verbal communication and like different sorts of communication that happens in the studio. And um, then again, Another very important aspect of um, the design process is the reviews. So we have mid reviews, we have the final reviews, and then you also have desk scripts. That's where you start basically, you know, uh, talking more one on one with your instructors. And you have all these like 3D models, all these like physical prototypes that you make, and all those drawings. But what happened with especially COVID in spring um, semester, starting spring semester, was all this great basically communication and collaboration sort of um, faced a big challenge. So this is just an image from, for example, a student from um, Harvard, uh, Harvard University. And this is basically how people are started working. So people are in their basically home environment. They have the 3D models, they have the physical prototype, but the best way of viewing it would be just probably either bringing it into the camera or taking pictures of it. So. And then people are all on Zoom. So there's a lot of like discrepancies between how we basically are used to all those communications and collaborations and how we're basically dealing with things now. So our school um, specifically came up with the idea of using Miro. So Miro is basically more of a 2D platform where you're putting all your drawings and you know all your design ideas, again, in a more of a 2D format and we see each other during Zoom. So that's how we're sort of working right now. So these are basically sort of the challenges that we are facing right now with um, uh, working in design. Um, and also uh, at the same time, it brings up a lot of opportunities. So this is just a case study that I've been working on. Like for example, I have a design idea. This is just a conceptual massing, which is common. Like you're in the early stages of your design, you come up with a design idea, you have a 3D model. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be putting this on Miro and my stronger, my instructor is going to see it and mark it up and that would be our uh, biggest part of collaboration. So this again brings up all the opportunities I would say um, that we started thinking about. So this is an image of Banffo AR which is a project that Luisa actually uh, worked on. Um, uh, so basically you have the actual um, physical prototype of the object, but then you can uh, start visualizing the background of the building, the history, the art that's displayed inside. So there's a lot of opportunities that you can have using, for example, augmented reality. And that is what sort of, um, these are some of the inspirations that we had for our project. So what happens in Inside XR, just to bring it all back together and also talk about a little bit about the cloud computing part. Um, so um, designers, uh, specifically in architecture school, we use a lot of uh, a platform called Rhino and then it has a, more of a um, visual programming language that's decided that's called Grasshopper and that's what most architects use in school environment. And then we were thinking, what if we could bring in all those like 3D models and all those design ideas in more of a, at this stage of the project, in more of an augmented reality, for example, uh, situation that students can, you know, um, start the instructor and other students can start visualizing each other's projects. 
and they can give each other feedback and they can, you know, uh, similar to what Miro does in 2D, but this, uh, I would say, is more of a collaborative situation and you get um, direct feedback. And we're using actually Google Firebase as the background. So we're connecting Unity and um, Rhino Grasshopper and, you know, we're working back and forth between these. And um, just to show you like, uh, some images. So, you know, if, if you're in the early stages of design, instead of just looking at those images that I showed that you put on the mirror board, now you can basically send, you know, you can actually start looking at the actual 3D model of uh, your project. And you can also have parts that show the drawing. So um, these are like some of the parts that uh, we've so far worked on for our platform. And um, there are parts that we're already like also going through. So we have also a research part that we're conducting. So we're basically interviewing design students, faculty. We're looking at how they provide feedback and how you know they uh, think of different aspects of massing and um, design strategies um, of the 3D content. And we're basically studying that as um, basically another side of our project. And for next semester, we're going to um, test um, our uh, augmented reality part of the software in one of the design studios and start seeing how it's it's going to be um, implemented within a studio situation and what would be the lessons that we learn and we will try to improve it from there. So yeah, this is, um, this is our presentation. Uh, I would just add that uh, the first prototype has already been distributed to a number of, you know, test uh, subjects, and we are receiving the first feedback from um, actual usage, so that we are prepared during the spring semester to deploy it in an actual course. Thank you, that was terrific. Um, so we'll open it up for questions. If anyone has questions for Luisa or Elmas. Chris? Hi, Luisa and Elmas. Thank Chris. you so much. So exciting to see this. Um, I know one of the things we've talked about in the past with you is kind of the challenge of um, finding people who can do this kind of programming and we're working with students to get them up to speed with Unity and these tools. Can you talk a little bit about um, how you're doing this work? You want to jump in? Yeah, so, um, how, okay. So th this semester we're already um, teaching, so Luisa is teaching a class in terms of daylighting and we're already starting to uh, bring up some of the ideas of uh, augmented reality, like use of augmented reality, besides uh, using Grasshopper, because th this is a reality that Grasshopper in Rhino is a little bit more complicated. So we're already trying to uh, build that foundation in the class that Luisa is teaching. So we're gonna bring up all those like ideas and you know introduce the students with it. But I would say next semester is going to be the biggest part that we would have to work with one of the faculty, you know, in terms of uh, making sure that the students have the background that they need in terms of you know use of Grasshopper and things like that. But the students would be mainly working with uh, Rhino and Grasshopper. So they are not the ones that are going to be working in Unity. So that's just the difference. Yeah, we try to keep them within the workflows that they already use. So that would be 3D modeling, parametric design, and then AR is our backend, you know, solution for them. They don't have to go through Unity. Great, thank you. We always have a good number of introverts here who are thinking of very deep questions. <laughs> the Zoom silence. Yeah, that's exactly part of what we try to do with InsightXR is actually go beyond verbal communication only, you know, in collaborative platforms. So we're looking at these multimodal collaborations where even if you don't want to talk, you can still give design feedback. That's actually one of the pro problems we are trying to address. So, so we do have a question in chat from Jason. Uh, could you say something about the compute platform that you used? Yes. 
Um, so we're so again we're using um, Grasshopper and we're using um, Firebase. So Firebase has an SDK. You can basically use it, and it's you know things are basically free. Um, you can use it in your Unity environment. So that's how we're basically sending and receiving data from using uh, Firebase to Grasshopper. So uh, we basically just use uh, Firebase. What was the most challenging part of getting those pieces working together? What did you learn through the process of doing this? Um, so I have, um, I think um, one of the challenges is um, mainly I'm one person working on, you know, um, I have full control over everything. So I think scaling it up, um, that would be, um, the, and controlling, you know, the flow of the information and, you know, making sure everything works, I would say that is part of the challenges with this project. And um, another one, again, going back to the, even the design part that's in Grasshopper, it requires, I think it requires a little bit of foundation understanding how, for example, visual programming in Rhino works. So I think um, there are like other solutions, not, not necessarily like this, but it's very, I think one of the challenges is making sure that it's simple enough that people are able to, you know, use it um, and so that it's successful. I think I need to reduce some of the complicated, like complicated parts about the grasshopper part, I would say. Thank you. So um, it's not much of a manipulation of the 3D model. Uh, this is more of a design feedback um, sort of a tool. So we don't have a feature that people, you can have multiple design options, for example, to visualize, but we don't have the manipulation uh, of the 3D model. Uh, yeah, basically we feeding feedback to inform the evolution of the solution, but that is not like that the user has access to a slider and is modifying itself. So we're capturing that feedback and then it's our, you know, uh, our algorithm that is incorporating that feedback into the evolution of the solution. It's not a direct, feed, uh, you know, manipulation. So that, that actually raises a lot of really interesting questions that we are addressing. All right. Thank you very much. That was really interesting and good questions to follow. Um, with okay. that, I think we should move on to our next uh, speaker.